Hey everyone, it's Don here, out here in the garage, working on the Jeep. Actually, not really working on it tonight. It's uh, getting a little bit late at night. It's actually getting well along in the week. The weekend's almost here. And according to the weatherman, this is supposed to be kind of a scruffy weekend. A lot of wind and rain and that kind of thing coming in. So it might just be a really good weekend to stay buttoned up in the garage here and see if we can't get a bunch of stuff done on this thing. So you know the drill, it's uh, Thursday night and uh, it's planning time. So grab your notebook, we're gonna build our plan, make sure this is a productive weekend. So let's get after it. Okay, well, I did get some shipping updates finally. So I've been mentioning that my main fuel line is lost. And I did finally get a tracking number from Morse 4x4. So that thing supposedly is shipping. And I got an update on my front brake calipers, which was not the greatest news, but, but what are you doing here? Well, it's me, of course. And I just want to know, are you going to get this Jeep back on the road this season? Oh, come on, man. Don't start with me with that. Jeez, it's, it's about the journey, not the destination. Don't you know that? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Isn't that what you've been telling that little old lady about that sailboat, too? Are you going to get that thing oh, on the water look, this year? Just get out of here. Go away. Don't, don't bother me. Just get out of here. All right, all right, all right, whatever. I'm out. So anyway, my fuel line supposedly has shipped. The brake calipers, unfortunately, one of those, they weren't going to ship until July. So I've canceled the one that wasn't going to ship until July, but they had already shipped or are shipping the other one. So I'm going to get one brake caliper new and I'll have to track the other one down around town here or something. So it's good that I left the tub loose for now because I will want to kind of pick this back end up a little bit and work up, be able to work on that fuel line easy. And I do, I did get a comment from somebody else who said they put that same 21 gallon tank in that I did and they said they were having troubles with that raised fuel input line bumping against the bottom of the, of the tub. So I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to lift this up a little bit. I think I might be able to set one of these little cameras down there and lower the tub back down and actually see what kind of clearance I got without having to climb up under there. So I'm going to do that and then I will start to rip into that block, I think, and start to get the big pieces off the motor so we can start getting that thing put together. So let's do that, shall we? All right, well, as you can see, this, I mean, we are almost exactly straight above this. Let's see if I can come in from the side here and show you. Hold on, let me grab the other camera because this one has my microphone on the top, so if I use it, you won't be able to hear me. So I'll have to take the mic off. So let's see if we can get in here and see what we got going on. So you can see that the alignment is pretty darn close to straight up and down from these hoses and this cross member right here. But rather than the, so the guy that left me the comment said that he took, he put a one inch lift on his body to clear these and I don't want to lift my body an inch. However, what it looks to me like is if I loosen these bolts here, or screws, which should be holding this fitting down in, it looks to me like if I just turn this a little bit, I will get, I can get that about an eighth of a turn, should move this main fuel output line about it's going to move it about a quarter of an inch further closer to the front of the jeep and it will point it a, a little bit of an angle same with this back one i think i can turn my hose clamp there too to put it face in some other direction so that it's not pointing up like that maybe i can take it off and flip it over and put it down but i'm going to try that and see if that doesn't sort me out here so let me see if i can move that around and then i'll come back and tell you how we did 
So just so you know too, I, this is the ground wire, which I do have hooked up and this is the main um, wire that runs to your, your uh, fuel indicator. And I don't have that hooked up yet, so I might want to try to get that uh, connector on there. I know it's out there in my wiring harness. I might want to get that on there before I set this back down. As I told you before, I have extra hoses on all these so I can get them out to the outside of the frame where they need to ultimately live so I can hook those up with this thing buttoned up. But uh, got to do something about these because they are pretty darn close to this little cross piece right here. So let me work on that for a minute. I'll come back and show you how we did. Okay, so after turning that fitting around a little bit, you can kind of see now my input hoses towards the front of the Jeep. As I started to set the body back down on there, um, I was kind of trapping the front hoses a little bit, but those were just, just needed to be moved around, so they were fine. But I do now have this hose, the fixed part of the hoses, kind of fitting up in the gap between those kind of cross member pieces and the bottom of the tub. So you can see me just kind of setting everything back down on there. And I knocked the camera out right at the end, but I think that I've got enough clearance now to make it with this thing just to reposition it a little bit. And I'll shorten up my hoses just a little bit and get them out there kind of just trapped there, but I'll fix that and off we go. Okay, so I did have some success with the gas tank back there. Um, I have had a couple people ask me, you know, for some impressions on how accurate the tub reproduction tub is and, you know, what my overall kind of impressions are of the thing. So I'm going to show you a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is just kind of, we're going to go down underneath. I'm going to show you how it sits on the body mounts or on the frame mounts. So let's go do that. And then I may walk you around and point out a couple things that I've noticed as I'm looking at it here which um, are not optimal, but we'll get to those. So bear with me for a second. I'm gonna pick you up. We're gonna go down underneath and have a look. Okay, well, here we are underneath and you can see here's my very front body washer sitting there and um, everything's lined up there. We're sitting pretty much on it. This next one, we're sitting all the weights on there, the weights on this one just fine. We can't really see it from here, but there is one underneath there. But when we come around to the back, I do have a little bit of a gap there, and I have a little bit bigger gap over here, which I haven't explained so far yet. So um, I don't really think it's a crooked frame. I don't really think it's a crooked tub. I think it might just be it's a little flexed and it will sort itself out as I l tighten everything up. I haven't really taken too many pains yet to line everything up. You can see here I measured the center of my frame and then I measured the center of the tub and independently and just put a mark on the center and so you know I can kind of line up that way and then if we look straight down I'm pretty much lined up with the back of that frame piece. So long story short, I'm not all 100% lined up right yet, but I think we'll be okay. Now, some of the things I have found is a few places like, hold on here, Let's see if we can, if I can get light. Well, maybe you can see this one pretty well from the way the sun's shining in here. So these are the welds where this, piece and uh, so this is the top of the, the top over the firewall and here's my side piece where we got our Jeep emblem so you can see that little divot right there that's a welding slash grinding mark same with this um, so and then like a spot weld mark right here if we look down this side and hopefully this will show up okay um, I'll point them out here what I'm looking at so you can see every spot weld here and the spot welds are just kind of I guess the only word I can think of is they're really deep so you can see them all here and again I know this is kind of a tricky thing with the light but let me see if I can see 
So spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, spot weld, off we go. So even as you run your finger across there, you can feel them just like took, took, took little, you know, flat spot or little divot every place there's a spot weld. So not perfect and, um, you know, no reproduction tub is obviously going to look as good as the one that came out of the factory. But, you know, I am a little surprised with some of the grind marks I'm seeing some of the places where, again, I don't, I don't know if the light's really helping this, but um, I think at the end of the day, you know, if a guy's gonna go now spend five or 10 grand on a paint job, probably gonna wanna do a little, a little bit of body work to kind of clean that stuff up just to fix those. However, that all said, <laughs> it's still, you know, an order of magnitude better than the tub I took off of here. So, you know, there's no huge rust holes through it and so forth. So yeah, it looks all right. Um, you know, we'll, we'll deal with it. It's a Jeep after all, we're not building a Lamborghini here. So I think the next thing I may do is I may just slide under the, under the chassis here and drop those rear spring or rear shocks off. So that I can, those can get the same paint treatment that the front shocks got. And I think I mentioned the other day that my gas line is coming. So I'm not tightening down the tub yet. I'm, I want to keep it loose until I get everything on there. So I'm going to pull the shocks and start working on getting those cleaned up. And then next order of business, we'll, we'll start to pull some of the stuff off this, this motor that I'm looking at right over here, right there, um, in preparation for ordering up a short block for that thing. So that's where we're at. Okay, well, I got the shocks out from under there, so I shut you off after a minute because it was getting boring, I'm sure. But um, I did have the, on the driver's side, where I'd hooked up my fuel return line, the little bracket that I had in there was just in the way, just enough to not let the top of this one shock come off. So I had to undo that. Um, but here they are. So same as the other ones, um, they're, they're not you know banged up or anything like that. They're just a little bit of rust coming through and uh, just need to standard cleanup and fresh paint like the other ones had. So as before, you know, there's my stickers that had kind of taken a little road rash anyway or sage brushes or something. So um, I'll just do the same thing. So I'm going to snip my red zip strip here. I'll take the boots off. I'll take them inside and wash them up with soap and water like I did on the other ones. And then uh, we'll tear the drill back out of the drawer and slap the, the wire wheel and that abrasive wheel in there and just clean these off and get them ready for some primer and some paint. And then they'll go back under there. 
So um, I'll, again, I've shown you that before. I'm not gonna bore you with that again, but just wanted to show you I did get them off there. It was not a big deal, but it was my first little episode of rolling around underneath the Jeep. Um, luckily with it up on those wheel dollies, I can fit under straight under the rear differential. So there's plenty of room, but it's just, um, it's beginning the rolling around on my back work. So we'll try to keep that to a minimum if we can. So let's get on with it. I'll come back when I've got something else exciting to show you. Well, I'm back here and, um, I got my hubs, so I wound up when I was taking the hubs apart to disassemble the front end, put the brakes on and so forth. I found one of the hubs didn't have half the parts inside of there, it was missing a bunch of springs and stuff, so I don't think, I actually think one of my hubs was maybe never really disengaging from the axle like it should have been. So I had to do a little digging. Warren didn't have these in stock, I tried to buy it right, right from the vendor and they didn't have them. Um, tried to look on Quadratech, Morris 4x4, all my usual go-tos, no one had them. Finally got around to four-wheel parts, and they did show that they had them in stock. I wasn't really sure if their system was accurate, but it was. I got them. Cool. Now we get the front end put back together. I still don't have my tie rod and my drag link. That's just perpetually on back order. It seems like maybe Warrior Products, I think, is who makes that. Maybe they... they just got completely behind and aren't digging out from the pandemic. Maybe they're gone, who knows? But all I'm hearing from Quadratech is that those are still, that's still back ordered. So this will be a little bit of progress on the front end. I mean, all the greasy work will be done. And then once I get that tie rod, I can slap that on there. The tie rod's no big deal. I don't need to steer this right now, so I can wait for that. But um, it's getting a little impatient. So next order of business, when we come back out here and really roll up our sleeves and get our hands dirty here, it's gonna be on that old greasy motor. And I'll be going through that thing, figuring out what's salvageable, what work needs to be done on the stuff we're gonna keep. Most of it will be clean up stuff. I'm not sure about the headers, things like that. And then I'll figure out, you know, as I strip it down, what, what gets off of there so I can put a short block in there. And then I'll get on the phone, start making some phone calls and start to figure out what it's going to take to actually get me a short block in on the way out here. So we can start to think about getting some power in this thing. So for right now, this is getting a little long. Um, seems like that happens. So I'm going to wrap it up and quit talking. Thanks for watching as always. Um, but I appreciate the comments. Keep those coming. That makes me at least believe there's a live body on the other side of the thing who is paying attention to what I'm doing here, which kind of is fun here. It keeps it interesting when I'm out here by myself in the garage. And uh, I'll check in with you next time around. We'll tear into this motor. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.